Hello and welcome to IntelliPath's YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking at API testing in Postman. So before we begin, let me just walk you through the structure of this video. We'll be starting with the theory part where we'll be covering or we'll be looking at some of the important concepts that you're going to need in the hands-on part. Now this part is crucial because when we move on to the API testing part in Postman, I want to make sure that you and I both are on the same page. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with the obvious question. What exactly is Postman? Postman is a tool that helps you test and work with APIs. It lets you send requests to see how an app responds, check if things are working according to the plan and even automate these checks. Developers and testers use it to make sure apps are communicating properly with each other. What does this mean? Now consider an example to get a better understanding. Say this is your client and then you have the server. Consider this bridge. That is an that is a communicating bridge as how your client is communicating with the server. There's a bridge. Okay. Now this particular bridge is managed by Postman. How the communication is happening, that particular bridge is managed by Postman. That is what is written right here. Postman is a tool that helps you test and work with APIs. This bridge is the API communication, which is being managed by Postman. So now let's look at how exactly these tests are being conducted or how exactly Postman works. By another example, you have a client and a server. The communication is happening between them. So we have a client and a server. So in this case, the client is the Postman and the server is JSON placeholder API, which you can find on the internet. Now let's see how the communication is happening. Right now, say you have a particular message. Your client Postman has a particular message and we're going to send it to our server, which is JSON placeholder API. Now this sending of a message is called as the request. You made a request by sending a message to the server. Now the server processes this request and sends this message back to you, which is known as the response. This is exactly how Postman works in a nutshell. But what exactly is contained within this message? What are the components of the message? Let's look at that. So there are a lot of components inside the message, but let's just look at the important ones, starting with HTTP methods. This is the this is the first step that you look into when you're setting up any APIs. That is the get request, post request, put, delete or patch. What are these? Get is you send a get request to the server when you need to just fetch some data from the server. Say if it, it, it is an API for books, then I am sending a get request to just list down the number of books. Then there is a post request. Post request is when you have to uh, like give some data or, or just put some data into the server. Like maybe I am adding a new book to the already existing API server. That is when I will put the post, like post my particular request into the server. Uh, uh, add this, add my request to your existing list as well. That is when you use post. Put is when you're updating an already existing resource. Delete is obviously deleting a re request. Patch is partially updating a request. Now, put and patch is both are updating, but the difference is put can, put will like completely overwrite whatever data was already existing. Put will completely overwrite that data and uh, like put in, in, in place of the old data, your, it will be replaced with whatever the new data that you sent. But with patch, it will only be partially updated. Whatever you will specify, only that uh, particular resources will be changed. Moving on, we have request body. Now again, request body is optional. Like if you're making a get request, I don't have to specify a body for a post of uh, for a get request because I'm asking the server, hey, can you send me the list of books that are included that are inside this API? So I don't need to send any body, right? But if I'm posting a request, if I'm asking the API to, if I'm asking the server to up, to update to to add my particular book into the already existing list, then I have to send the book as well. Okay, this is my book, add this to your server, right? That is the body when you are giving some data to the server as well. Next, we have the headers. Now, headers are the additional data, like headers are the additional metadata between the server and the client. They provide important information that helps ensure proper communication and functionality of the response or the request. Metadata is usually used to transmit any additional information that your server might require. But what kind of additional information? 
that can be multiple like the information about the client like who is sending the request like in our case postman will be sending the request so that who is sending the request postman is sending the request what kind of data what kind of format are you sending the data in like if it's a json format if it's an xml format and if i am i'm sending my request in json format i want my request to be in json format or if i want my uh, data in xml format that all can also be specified inside the header moving on we have url now url is very important because this is the end point or the address as to which you're sending your message here's an example url now i have broken it down into three parts the base url path variables query parameters we'll look at them in detail in the hands on part but for now you need all you need to understand is base url is like the server where all the request is going that is the base here all the requests are supposed to go whatever request you are making in that particular api everything will be going into that particular base url that is specified then you have path variables as the name suggests variables it can be it can change right it can be changed like say uh, coming back to our uh, book api if i am listing if i am asking for a book with id number 2 or 3 that is the path the first time i am asking for book id 1 that is a path variable second time id 2 path variable has changed if i want to fetch a book with say id number 5 path variable changes again book id equals to 5 it keeps on changing then you have query parameters query parameters is like the additional info like if i only want a particular genre say if i only want comedy or if i only want action then i can specify that in the query parameters like the category should be comedy or the category should be action something like that enough with the theory part now let's just move on to the hands on part for that let's just use this api json placeholder dot type eco dot com I'll leave the link to this API in the description down below. You can take that. For now, let's just copy that API and go to our Postman and create a new request. Paste our API there. Send it and see what we're getting. Okay, we're getting a status code as 200. This shows that our request is successful and the server has responded as required. Now we are using a get request as you can see here. Our HTTP method is get to just fetch whatever was included in this. a uh, particular url and we are getting all of that here it's html um now we're going to use this particular url a lot this is going to be our main server so we need to save it as a variable but before we do that we need to save this particular request somewhere let's just create a new collection my new collection i will call this as the um new api there it is now let's just save this as a variable right now i'm not getting the option of saving this as a variable so i'll just have to oh there it is set as variable it's gone again there if you're not getting this option like i wasn't getting in the beginning you can just copy it go to your collection click on edit Let me just close that, and then variables. Add a new variable. Initial value of this current value. Okay, same. We'll call this as base URL. Let's save that. Now, if we come back here, we can replace the whole thing as base URL. Now, if you try to send the request again, you'll get the same. See, it is code as two hundred. working okay. let's save it now if you go back to json placeholder there are a lot of things you can try with this let's look at whatever we can use we have posts comments albums okay let's try posts um let's create a new collection duplicate this new api um we'll call this posts so no, let's call this comments um Let's list down the posts that they have. Okay, that is well working correctly. Let's read the comments. Good. Now let's look at path variables. I talked about it, right? How to define them? Let's give it an ID, path variable. Now, if I want to only want the post with the ID one. I can just write one here and if I send the request you can see I only have one particular JSON I am only getting one particular post with the ID 
another thing you need to keep in mind here is that it doesn't really matter what you write after you specify uh, after you specify this id parameter i can keep any name say deadpool if i put it there and if i still put the value as 1 I'll still get the same result because it doesn't really matter what you're putting on the left side when it comes to path variables, as long as the value is correct. If the value is wrong, that will be there. So if I give a weird value, then we'll get a 404 not found. Now there are a lot of status codes in Postman. Let's just quickly go back to the PPT and just let me just walk you through the status codes in Postman. I promise it won't be too long. just a quick just a quick overview of what all status codes you can expect in postman this is important because this is how you will be communicating with the server 200 anything with 2 green is okay okay created no content it's fine green is fine orange is a warning bad request unauthorized forbidden not found method not allowed conflict red is a big no something has terribly severely gone wrong and uh, your application is not going to work so this is all going back Um now let's just quickly look at query parameters. For query parameters you start with a question mark or you can just directly write it here. Let me just list it down again so that I can look for something. Um okay. So let's just take this name. I'm not going to pronounce that. So the name. So the query parameter, I want to list down the comment with the name as something. Let me send the request. and i've gotten and i got the post with the name something so now let's just save this and let's just now let's experiment with post request now let's see how post request work so i'm going to call let's just duplicate that and i'm going to call this comments post okay let's change the http method to post and this time we need okay let me just save this first this time we need a body raw json format let's just go back to comments and see how it is coming okay we need this let me copy that and paste it here um let this be post number 7 maybe there um maybe this name right Site at the rate gardener dot biz. No one changed that. So now let's just send the request, and a new resource was successfully created. I hate to break your heart, but this is a dummy server. So whatever changes that you're gonna make is not going to be updated in the server. Meaning that if I check my comments here again, if I list down the comments with the ID, what was our ID? it was 501 okay so if i put here 501 it is not there so <laughs> so it's not going to be updated on the official server but here it will show that it's created because it's a dummy api now similar to the post request we can also create put and patch as well let's just duplicate that first one comments so uh, patch and create um see if i have to i uh, this is id1 so in the body this will be the same for put let's save that send the request that was put you can change this to patch but with patch like i said it won't override the whole data so you don't have to send the whole thing you can just maybe change the name so just let the id be there and uh, just keep it tight it will just update okay it will just update that guy that also work next you have delete as well again you can change the id that also work your data has been successfully deleted 
That was all for how to test API in Postman. If you really enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to Intellipads YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Bye.